helping men enjoy a healthier and more enjoyable shaving experience with Douglas Smythe. This is episode 130 on Alternative Health Tools podcast, where together we discover and share new alternative health tools and resources from alternative healthcare practitioners and experts. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Alternative Health Tools. This is your co-host, Kim Shea, and I'm talking to you from this side of the pond here in Southern California. And today is Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. I have the privilege of speaking with Douglas Smythe today. He is the co-founder of Phoenix Shaving. And from a health perspective, how we shave is really affects our skin and how we feel about ourselves. And and this gentleman just seems so cool and his products are so lovely. I wanted to talk to him. So welcome, Douglas Smythe. Thank you, Kim. It's, it's really nice to be here. Thank you. Can you tell me about yourself, about your background? Uh, well, geez, um, it's it's kind of a, a long story, but we'll, we'll start it anyways. We got time. Uh, uh, yeah, right. I guess we do. Well, I originally grew up in, was born and raised in uh, Massachusetts. And after college, I moved down to Central America and kind of on a whim. I didn't know anyone down there in Costa Rica and I didn't know the language and everyone that I knew thought I was having a breakdown or something like that. They were like, what are you doing down there? I was like, I just want to go down there and live. Like, what? They did, couldn't wrap their mind around it. And uh, I didn't even have a place to stay when I got there. I ended up staying in a hammock in the, the rainforest at the, on, the, on this beach in Montezuma, Costa Rica. The weather was just perfect, so I could do that. And I did that for about four years, the first two years anyways. The second two years, I actually started the graphic design business down there. But in my time there on the beach, I created this afterbite solution because I found myself getting bit between the hours of 5 and 6 p.m. every day on the beach. Sand fleas would come out and make me their dinner. And uh, there was nothing to really treat them with where I was living, no no afterbite type solution. So I had to create my own. And I did with the chemicals that were available to me in the local pharmacies or pharmacias down there. And I created this product. Well, it wasn't a product at the time. I created this solution at the time called, itch, I was calling it Itch No Mas. And it was so effective. I had locals as well as other tourists knocking on my tent flaps to get themselves some. You know, while swinging in my hammock, I was thinking, daydreaming more more than anything else, that if I ever made my way back to the United States, I would produce this stuff and sell it. And it really was just kind of a, a joke. But that's exactly what happened. When I finally returned to the United States four years later, I came back to a whole different United States. I came back to an Etsy world um, where finally the playing field was leveled and you could create your own products and sell them online. And it was it was so much easier than when it was back in the day. And that's exactly what I did. I created another product with it called Stink No Mas, which was an emergency insect repellent slash deodorant. So as you wore it and sweat, your body heat would release the essential oils into the air that would actually repel the bugs. And that actually did better than Itch No Mas, but I just did that for a few months and it, it, it took off. It took off really well. And I I, you know, I, but what I found was I was losing more money on shipping than anything else. So I decided to turn my attention on the United States. And that's how Phoenix Shaving kind of was born in a nutshell anyways. <laughs> that's really cool. Are those products still available? Or do you sell no. them? No. <laughs> Actually, okay. Well, well the Stink No Moss, it's, it's now called Outdoorsman's Friend. Um, and we do sell it in the summertime. We do seasonal products too. So in the summertime, when the bugs are out, we tend to sell that. But it's not a year yearly offering. Okay. That's really neat. That's neat you invented that. And so is your background in chemistry at all? <laughs> it's not actually. Um, oh. I, but I did, ha I, you know, I actually created my first perfume when I was about eight years old with a chemistry set that my parents had bought me. And uh, in fact, my mother still has it. It's a rose perfume. I don't know if that tells oh. you how good it was, but she does <laughs> still have it. And um, yeah, so I was always interested in that, interested in, in essential oils and fragrances. It was always big for me. And uh, I'm just a creative a creative, I guess you would say. And so I've always like, you know, put slap stuff together. And that's why when I came back to the country and found or discovered Etsy, which we're not on anymore, but at the time it was like, it was such a shock. It was like all those ideas I've ever had, I could finally put, you know, test out and see if they really, if there's any traction there. So yeah, I think I'm more inventive than I, you know, than a chemist, but um, that's just how it is. And then my girlfriend is the co-founder of the company as well. She's an, well, she was an acupuncturist for years and that's, that was her bread and butter. But our company just, it took off really, really fast. Before we knew it, we, we were on everyone's lips and uh, everyone around the world wanted our products. And here we are. 
Well, you have a beautiful website and all the products Thank on you. there look like they're pretty enough just to leave out on your countertop because <laughs> they're really neat looking. You have a product called CK6. That's like your your deluxe it's a formula. Product. Yeah, it's a deluxe it, f- shaving formula. And is that is that ve- vegetarian or vegan? Well, it's, it's vegan. It's yeah, vegan. I'm okay. vegan. Uh, so I've been vegan for 20 years. So we try to make all of our products 100% vegan. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. cool. There are a few with honey in them. So, I mean, but I, I, I give honey a pass for other reasons. But uh, Yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably due to the fact that I don't know if the bees would still be here if we weren't domesticating them and taking care of them. You know? Oh, that's an interesting so, perspective. Okay, I'm glad yeah. about that. I just figured yeah. there's enough to share if we're nice about it. So. <laughs> for next <Yeah>. week. <laughs> so they look, they look very luxurious. Um, so for men, I would think this would just be very desirable. And that is a question I have for you because your products are all geared towards men. Can women use these products too, like on their legs? Yes. Because some of that stuff just looks so nice. Oh, yes. Uh, we do. You know, we actually had a women's line uh, about five years ago. And the thing is, the market just wasn't there yet. Women haven't really moved over to traditional forms of shaving. It'll happen. It's coming. But when we decided to introduce that line, it wasn't there yet. So we just kind of made a few unisex type scents that if women are interested, they st- they can pick this stuff, this stuff up and it will work for them, fragrance-wise and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, it is geared towards men. And you know, I mean, we have a whole retro thing going on. So I, I guess it's any person that's into sci-fi and retro culture and whatnot and like the atomic age would enjoy our stuff, you know, visually. Uh, we also have an, you know, an ongoing story. We have this universe we've created around our products with different characters on the labels that come and go. Some of our sales pages are continuations and stories that you have to, you know, you have to find the other story on the other sales page. And it's like, it's really involved. And we have a cult following of men and women. So it, while it, it seems to be a man's world when it comes to traditional shaving, there are women uh, that love our stuff as well. Yeah, I could see why. The story is at the Hotel Cecil. Oh, that's part that's of it. There is, yeah, that's part of it. That's okay. a continuation. There's a, yeah, there's a part in the story. It's just an ongoing saga. And there's one where I'm being held captive at the Hotel Cecil. And that came out last Halloween. So it was just thematic with that. In fact, we it was only supposed to be a seasonal scent. But then I guess Netflix recently released a documentary series on the Cecil Hotel. And so we were getting requests to bring it back. And so we did, you know. And with that actually came a booklet. I wrote a small, like, novella. <laughs> That you can also get with yeah, the, the purchase of the, you know, so it's a story. You can get an ebook of it or the a fit physical book. Uh, we had hotel keychains that were also bottle openers. So, I mean, was, we try to make it like a really uh, immersive experience. So, it's more than just shaving, it's more than just male grooming, it's more than just grooming in general. It's this whole just experience, like that feeling you get at the movies when you go to, remember going to the movies? Long time ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? As the lights dim, that like anticipation you get right before it begins, like that kind of excitement, that's what we try to recreate with our products and make it more than just a daily chore. I like that. I like that very much. And, and I, I'm not trying to complain about do you have stuff for women because women have a lot of options out there, a lot of different product <sighs> lines that are very luxurious and very pampering. So I think it's, it's nice true. that you develop something for men. Well, you know, we finally, we've given men permission to talk about these things that in the past we just haven't been able to, you know. And uh, so, yes, well, in, it, it, for the first time in history, our stuff in the bathroom take up more space than the <laughs> women's. I mean, our customers buy like all the different scents, fragrances, different brushes. They own them all. And like, that's the one big complaint they get from their significant others half the time is, why do you need all the shave stuff? <laughs> it's so cool. it's like payback. Cool. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I saw you have shave brushes, which are neat. We have one of those in my house that we inherited from an uncle, so that was pretty neat. And then you've got really nice soaps and things like that. So let's get let's get towards what you what you're promoting, which is the wet shave, because that's why you have all these products. Is that right? Yeah, and that term can often be confusing. Uh, typically, when I speak somewhere, I ask how many people are wet shavers here, just to see what the reaction is. And usually every hand goes up in the audience because people figure if they're using water and a razor, they're a wet shaver. And that's not the case. What we call wet, sh- what we consider wet shaving in the industry is using traditional tools like a safety razor or a straight razor, a brush and a soap puck. That usually constitutes wet shaving. Uh, but again, it's a confusing term. We should just call it traditional shaving if you ask me, but I got to go with what we got okay. out here. And uh, so that's it. And we're trying to move people away from using cartridge razors and multi-blade razors that we've been using for the last, you know, 40 years, uh, pretty much sold the bill of goods. 
The only reason why cartridge razors or multi-blade razors ever made their way on the market had nothing to do with a better shave or a high-quality shave. It was just that Gillette was losing their patent rights for double-edged blades back in 1970, 71. So they needed to create something new. And that's what they did. And they went from a multi-million dollar company to a multi-billion dollar company overnight with the introduction of cartridge razors and multi-blade razors. But with that came ingrown hairs, razor burn, razor bumps. These things never existed before 1970. And with that problem, they also created the solution. There were these different bombs and moisture to use, to gas yes, to treat that. If you look back in history, uh, historic photos, even jazz musicians, you won't see any bumps on them, any razor burn or anything like that. Nowadays, you look at guys, they got bumps, they have razor burn. It's all caused by multi-blade cartridges or multi-blade razors because you only really need one blade to shave your face with. Anyone who tells you anything else is just trying to sell multi-blades because with every blade you drag across your face, you're taking off a layer of skin. So the more blades on that razor, the more skin you're taking off, the closer you're getting that hair cut. And uh, it's just begging to be an ingrown hair to drop below the skin after the shave. So yeah, we've been inadvertently hurting ourselves. And I think, you know, I have a beard right now because of COVID. I haven't been to the barber in, you know, a year, but typically I'm clean shaven. And, uh, but this beard fashion that you see of the last 10 years, I really think it's a response or a byproduct of cartridge razor and multi-blade shaving. Most men, if you ask them, say they hate shaving. And it's only because they're using those one size fits all razors. And again, inadvertently giving ourselves horrible skin, a horrible shave every time. You can't use the same razor on everybody's face. We all have different, uh, whisker quality, uh, unique skin conditions to deal with. And that's the thing with traditional shaving. You can finally customize the shave to your own unique face by using different types of safety razors and different types of blades. There's over 100 different DE blades brands that you can choose from and try out, which we recommend because they all shave differently. The edges are all differently. So that different brushes, different soaps, different aftershaves. So you, with all these different components, you can finally customize that shave to treat your face. And you'll actually fall in love with the process once you do. And another thing, multi-blade cartridges, as you know, over the years, the prices have gone up and up and up where four blades, four cartridges cost you like $25, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous. Uh, so much, I mean, I remember being in college, I would make one cartridge last for months before I changed so it. And like, so I'm using this disease <laughs> thing on my face. You know, I'm just, you're asking for problems there. Whereas double-edged blades, such as you use in a safety razor, you can get 100 of them for 9 to $15, if that tells you wow, anything. Wow, quite the difference, yeah. So, I mean, granted, there are there are shaving clubs out there where they'll charge you, you know, lower prices. But at the end of the day, it's like they're still selling you cartridge and multiplayer razors. But it's still selling the wrong tool for the job. So that's why we're trying to push people over to using uh, safety razors and straight razors instead of these one-size-fits-all plastic cartridges. And aside from that, uh, this, these are heirloom pieces. You know, you can pass this down to your son, your it's children's beautiful. children, so on and so forth. Razor. Whereas cartridge, thank you, cartridge razors, they're just filling up landfills. And so is the, you know, the, the goo in the can, we call it. Those empty aerosol cans are filling up the landfills as well. Uh, using a soap uh, and a brush, safety razor, it's better for the planet. It's better for your face. And it's better for your wallet at the end of the day too. So it's really a no-brainer. That's great. That's these are you're raising some really valid points. I know um, in the women's shaving, there are these cartridges you can buy, and they've got these strips of like gel on the right. and it, the, the moisturizing. Yeah, strip. and first of yeah. all, the razor has what a hard time reaching your skin because it's it's below these strips, which are just in yeah. the way. And so I imagine you're getting a really very close shave with what you're selling. Yes, and so much, and women actually love it as well because they don't have to shave as much when they use a safety mm -hmm. razor because it's a closer yeah. shave. That's neat. Tell me about how you go about it. What is there a different method of shaving? There is. Um, you know, I mean, it's interesting with cartridge razors and multiple. I, didn't, I was never really taught how to use a cartridge razor growing up. My dad used a safety razor on the weekend, so I would watch him do that. But cartridge razors, I kind of had to figure out on my own when I was in like high school. They, they mail them out to the guys. When you turn 18, you get one in the mail. And it has to do with the civil service. Once you put, Gillette was somehow in cahoots with them that you would get one in the, in the mail. So they get you right there when you're young. And with that, you, 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 know, you rub the lather on your face and you do one shave, quick shave, rinse off, and you're gone, you're, you're good to go. But with a traditional shave, there's multi-passes that you do. Because it's not about taking it all off with one pass. It's about reduction hair reduction with each pass. And you got to keep that in mind. Most people try to shave and take it all off in one pass, and that's where you're going to run into trouble too and damage your skin. So what you would do is, well, you take the brush and the puck of soap, 
you wet the puppy soap. I put a little bit of hot water on it, let it sit for about five minutes, and I hop in the shower. Uh, when I come out, dump the water off the puck, wet the brush, and I, we call it loading the brush. So a few swirls on top of the soap, and then you can build the lather in a, in a mug after the fact, or you can build the lather right on your face. I choose to use, you know, do it right on my face and uh, cut the middleman, if you will, the, the mug. Then from there, I do my first pass with the razor, which would be with the grain. Um, and then pretty much rinse and repeat after the first pass all around the face, rinse, re-lather again, and now I go across the grain. Then rinse and repeat and go the other way across the grain with the third pass. And then if you still need another pass, you would do the fourth pass against the grain. And I know that sounds taboo when you say against the grain, but again, this, this that whole theory, that whole concept comes out of the early 70s and that switch to cartridge razors. Because with safety razors, they never talked about against the grain being evil. You can go against the grain with a safety razor and with a straight razor as well. And so, yeah, then you would go against the grain. However, with, a, you know, with your face, hairs grow in all different directions. So it's really about learning the pattern that your beard grows in and taking that into consideration when you're doing your against the grain pass. It might not always be up. It's just going against the growth, you know? So you have to take that into consideration. Lastly, a lot of guys... Uh, will chase a baby butt smooth shave, and that'll get you into trouble. So if you're a guy listening to this right now, stop doing that because what's going on is it's the whiskers, it's the hairs uh, confusing you or tricking you. They're very deceptive in that way because the whole reason why we use shave soap on our face is to hold water there, hydration, for the whiskers to suck it up, making it fatter and an easier target to hit. So they've got all this water that they absorb. They're 30% larger than what they normally would be. So if you still feel hair on your face and you're tempted to shave more, stop right there. Just wait a half an hour to an hour and it'll shrink down. And I'm telling you, you'll have a baby butt smooth shave already. But oftentimes we'll chase that and end up cutting ourselves or getting some razor burn. So, and this is just traditional forms of shaving or you know, a concept that comes out or born out of traditional shaving and uh, once more we're not taught this so it right there you're gonna your skin's gonna regain equilibrium regain balance and it's gonna look a lot better once it heals uh but you know again whenever i speak anywhere most people when i ask them how many people here have sensitive skin nine out of ten hands go up in the audience that's impossible we can't all have sensitive skin what's going on here Again, we look at cartridge raisins and multiplates. We're inadvertently hurting our skin and we have been for years this is fascinating i had no idea yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> I call it the cartridge raiser conspiracy. It is conspiracy. <laughs> Thank you for getting to the bottom of it. Wow. Your your website's really interesting. It, you've got a lot of videos on there that people can click and get more information. And... Yes. Yes. In fact, um, if if you're listening right now and you want to watch a video on how to traditional wet shave, just go to howtowetshave.com. And I'm right there showing you how to do it. And um, I try to keep it fun <laughs> at the very least. In fact, we have a a shaving show, a morning shave show, which isn't what it sounds like. It's more in line with like car talk from NPR, where if even if you're not interested in shaving or interested in learning about cars, you'll still listen because it's entertaining. It's the same thing with our show. We cover history, collect, collecting, because we also collect vintage razors as well. You know, we do it all. It's kind of like Wayne's World meets Car Talk <laughs> meets Antique Road Show, all lumped into one. That's called I'd Lather Be Shaving, and you can find that at idlatherbeshaving.com. And uh, highly entertaining, but you'll definitely walk away knowing a little bit more about traditional shaving, which sounds crazy, I know. But it's it's very interesting once you dive into that. That sounds hole. awesome. It sounds wonderful. So I noticed, like, um, you also have a video on how to make manly dryer sheets. Or are you saying, like, spring meadow <laughs> dryer sheets are not manly enough for you? Is that what you're trying to say? I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for the most part, okay. yes. Yeah, I try to. I'm like the Martha Stewart of of <laughs> traditional shaving. I I do tips, tricks, and hacks videos as well. I have my own uh, channel too called Douglas Smythe Channel dot com, and it's always like these wacky like you know hacks and tricks for a better shave or just grooming things. And that was one of them because um, you know when you start when you get involved in the shaving world or in the fragrance world, you want you know, that same scent in everything, you know, in the shampoo and the soap, but you don't want to, you know, screw that up. And so I thought, well, what, what, what's an extension of that? And it's, you know, perfuming your clothing. And what's the best way to do that is dryer sheets. And rather than using those chemi ones that they sell in the stores, you can actually make your own all natural Oh, ones. I'll have to look that up. I, I know with this. Yeah, watch okay, the video. Okay, I'll definitely I'll check it it's out. It's in my blog on my, on okay. my site, actually. All right. so, uh, yeah, yeah, I will look at that. I know sometimes I've picked up lavender things to put in the dryer to make the clothes smell better. But yes. then I feel bad for yeah. my sons as they're going off to school and work. I think, ah, maybe this isn't a good fragrance for them. So the fact that you could make your own, 
that's really neat. Guys do love it though. Flor- Lavender is really making a comeback right now. And it's also, you know, it's great for pillowcases, yes. very soothing yes. at night. It helps you fall asleep. Um, but it's coming back. It's it's bigger in Europe right now, florals, hmm. but they do. I definitely use it in a lot of my perfume. That's wonderful. That's because it's, you know, it's just growing on the planet. It's there for us to use. So I think it's great. But I can understand if some people didn't find it manly enough. You're kind of a writer too, it seems like, because you've got these storylines going. It's really a very engaging site. I highly recommend people check it out just because you'll be you'll be entertained and everything's really interesting to look at. And your scent chart, your scent chart is really wonderful to look and see all the different definitions and examples of what those scents are so you can maybe kind of have an understanding of what your own interest is, what your style exactly. is. Exactly. It's, it's so people can really, you know, we do have a live chat right there and I'm on the other end of that. So people can talk to me at any moment. But I mean, there are people that are shy and they want to figure it out on their own. And uh, so we put the, ch- the scent chart there for them just to make it easier for them to figure it out for themselves if they want to. But we try to make it super, super easy to get what you want at the end of the day. In fact, uh, we have almost 70 cents right now that we offer. And so it can be difficult, as you can imagine. But we do sell samples, sample vials of the aftershave cologne. So, you know, for a dollar. So people can figure it out for themselves before they invest in whatever they want. And we do have starter kits, too, for anyone interested in that. But, you know, I mean, when it comes to picking up a safety razor, you can pick, you can go to eBay to pick one up, uh, a 75-year-old vintage Gillette or whatnot uh, that will shave just as good today as it did 75 years ago when it came off the assembly line. And that's what I'm saying about these things. They're built to last. They really are. It's, it's, it blows my mind that we didn't get back to this sooner. And we only have the, you know, the advent of the internet really to thank because for a long while, it was very difficult to find these things and then find the blades, the replacement blades. They really did their best to kind of do away with them and bury the whole concept, but it's the way to go. Well, it sounds like it is. And like you said, it's good for the environment. It's good for your health. It's also a nice treat for you to not have it be such a chore and to have a nice shave. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah. That will last a little it, it, longer. It's very soothing. It's very therapeutic in the morning. It's time to yourself. And it's, it's hot lather. There's nothing... Guys have com- uh, compared this to green tea ceremony. It's so like... I mean, it's really... Like, there's a zen element to it. It's time away from the kids, your family, whatever. You're taking care of yourself. You're pampering yourself. It's very tactile. I mean, this is something that guys didn't... We, we just couldn't talk about. We couldn't really get into before. We, You know, you had to maintain that, 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 that guys, that tough guys, if you will. Uh, whereas... Now it's really like this returning to this like other side, this pampering. And uh, and again, it's grown. There's forums, there's communities. I threw a conference every year called the Big Shaves West. And uh, we have, you know, uh, vendors from all over the world. We have lectures. It's just a whole big, I make a week of it actually. <laughs> and, uh, and it's just great getting together. And, you know, we have the cigar night. We also have the tombstone trip. I do a little tour guide impersonation. Uh, but we also talk about this stuff like skincare and, you know, and how it's an, ex- an extension of, you know, style, if you will, as well. And just taking care of yourself. And that's, a, it's just, I can't, we kind of sneak it in there. And it's great seeing guys, you know, just get permission to be able to talk about this stuff. I love know. it. I love it. I think it's wonderful. Um, can you tell me about aftershave? Is that basically just something that makes you smell good or is it, does it actually have a medicinal value for your skin? Oh yeah. Traditionally, aftershave, the only reason why it was ever used was for an antiseptic because back in the day, people were dying from shaving, from going to the barber. Yes. In fact, uh, Henry David Thoreau's brother, the reason why Henry David Thoreau went to Walden Pond was he was mourning the death of his brother who died from an abscess on his face from the barber. So that's why we use aftershave as an antiseptic first. Uh, the fragrances is totally an afterthought. And that's why traditionally back in the day, the fragrances usually only lasted about 30 minutes. We, on the other hand, today, uh, we add loads of skin food to ours, as well as make it a little more potent. So we call it aftershave cologne. So it's like a two for one. It has you know all the great skin food of a traditional aftershave with the staying power of a, a cologne. Um, so yes, nowadays they do, they are packed with more skin food just to counteract the effects of, or the drying effects of an alcohol. At least ours do. Ours do. I can't say what everyone else okay. is doing, but that's, that's what we're aiming for. Okay. And you have a lot of those on your site as well, right? Yeah. Yes. We have, you know, for every soap, we have a matching aftershave. We also do a, an aftershave gel too called Star Jelly. And it's kind of like if... I don't know, aftershave bomb and a traditional aftershave had a baby, it would be star jelly, which is like gel with a little bit of alcohol in it. So you still get that dry down feeling of a traditional aftershave, but it's more soothing to the oh, skin. Nice. Wow. 
yeah, it, it is well, nice. Well, I would like it very much if you would come out with a women's line because I'm very envious. <laughs> yeah. But for my sons and uh, my boyfriend, I think this is just wonderful. It's a wonderful product. So is there anything else you'd like us to know? We'll put all the links for your um, your different sites on the show notes. So you've got, uh, if, you, if you are listening and you'd like to go check it out, it's phoenixshaving.com. And then we'll also put the links for how to wetshave.com and douglassmythechannel.com. And I'd ra- I'd lather be shaving.com. We'll put all those on the show notes as well. But is there anything else that you would like us to know? I think that's really it. I mean, just, you know, for your listeners to know that I'm a, I'm around all the time. I'm, I can talk about this stuff all day. So if you have any questions, concerns, suggestions, anything like that, you can email me, Douglas, uh, Douglas at phoenixshaving.com, or contact me through my site. We have you know, a few different ways of contacting us, but I'm always, always around to talk about this and, and help you figure it out because it can be rather overwhelming. So uh, <laughs> don't be bashful. I'm, I'm here to help. Yeah. This is my Because you said there were different types of, of razors or something for different skin. Is that what you were saying? So someone yes, wants help you know, with that. Th- that's the thing, too. If you're, if you're considering making the switch over to traditional shaving, you don't necessarily have to fall in love with the first razor you pick up because, again, you you, you got to remember you're customizing this shave to your face. So the first razor you choose may not be the one you stick with, and the first blade you use inside that razor may not be the blade you stick with. We you know encourage people to use well, just sample a bunch of different blade brands and find one that works best for their face. And the same thing goes for the razor. Same thing goes for the brush. Same thing goes for the soap. And it sounds like a lot of work, but once you get into it, and once you find the ones that work for you, that you know the combination that works for you. That's it right there. You'll never look back at cartridge razor mm. shaving or any you know, of that other stuff. And you may never grow a beard again either. It's very addictive yeah. once you oh, start sounds doing sounds wonderful. It. Yeah. And late, for the ladies as well, we do have a lot of unisex scents. So if you're listening, again, contact us and we'll give you a list of the scents that women love as well. My girlfriend, she uses a bunch of our scents. And in fact, some of the manlies are what we one would consider manly scents. She uses too. She thinks they're great. So... Yeah, there's loads of stuff for women as well. Don't let the labels uh, throw okay, you off. Okay, thank you. And after all, a scent comes from the world, and there's lots of things that people are attracted to, different scents. So like you said, lavender is it's coming It's true. Back. It's called parf- perfume yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day. Guys don't like We call it cologne and stuff like that now, but it's always been perfume since day one. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Douglas. I really enjoyed talking to you. This is great. And uh, check out his website. If you haven't done so, you're going to love it. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. And for those of you who are listening, thank you for um, listening to Alternative Health Tools. And you can catch this podcast anywhere you get your podcast. Please consider coming by alternativehealthtools.com and leave us an audio message. There's a little blue circle with a microphone in it. You can click it, say hi, ask a question. Produced by Heard Not Seen Media, visit imaginepodcasting.com for more information. 